with Julius, it's it's almost like it, when when they were in the uh, the COVID shortened year, the way that he used to find Reggie Bullock a lot. They had had some excellent chemistry, especially the way that he would find him on the three point line. The way that Reggie Bullock would relocate to those open spaces, and Julius would always look for him. Also, I like the fact that you know even despite the gripes, it always seems like for Grimes, for example, for example, you know Grimes comes back, he comes off the bench. First two plays, they run for Grimes. You know, you could always see Julius trying to get those guys going after finding out that, you know, there, there is some uh, some issues there. So I, I like the fact that he's trying to get, you know, some of those guys going. And, and then just, again, his decision-making. That's been the most important thing for me is how he handles uh, the extra attention to on the ball. Does he make the quick decision? Does he make the right read? And lately, he, he's been doing that, man. He, he's been doing it. And also, I, I like the fact that he's been trying to operate a little bit more through the paint. And really just trying to get aggressive, get those paint touches and either finish at the rim or find those guys. Because once the attention comes on him in the paint, somebody's going to be wide open. So I like the fact that he's he's been the aggressor and really trying to attack the rim. A lot more through the paint, like way more. And, and I used to not love a Julius Randle post up. And the reason why is because it almost always came 9, 12, 14 feet away from the rim. And that's right. just not good basketball. Right. Like they first of all, his weakness has always been dealing with doubles, double teams in the post, yep. recognizing yep. them early enough to be able to get off the ball. He's for the most part, he's gotten caught a couple of times here or there, but he's for the most part done a very good job recognizing double teams. The ones he has the most trouble with are the ones that come from the baseline. He just doesn't really mention it and some, uh, doesn't notice it. And sometimes he just turns into it. And those are the ones that he will struggle with the most. He has done a much better job recognizing those kinds of double teams and mm -hmm. sometimes he's actually done a good enough job recognizing it that last night toronto wasn't even really double teaming him until they absolutely yeah had to. I, yeah i was i was wondering that i mean you know maybe i think it was it was a confidence in barnes and and, and an OBS single defenders that they it didn't really seem like they were sending a lot of attention until oh, absolutely necessary they they weren't and i think i think part of it is that ananobi is a defensive player of the year candidate, like he could show up on defensive player of the year ballots and you have faith in that guy. And I think another part of it has to be that they've watched Julius Randall's last 10 games. And they're like, this guy is slicing up teams whenever people send doubles now. And they're getting open standstill threes because of this. So would we rather give an open standstill three to Dante DiVincenzo, mm. who's hitting everything he puts up these days, or would we rather Julius Randle shoot a fadeaway two? And maybe it'll be closer to the basket, but it only counts for two. And Randle destroyed them, and then they felt like they had to send help. That's what a great player does. And when he was rolling, like he's been rolling like a great player lately. The thing that he's been doing that he has clearly put so much more of an emphasis on that he ever has before is that he he has noticed the difference between a five foot post up and a 10 foot post up. He has noticed the difference of what happens when you catch it with one or even two feet in the paint and how much easier that little fall away shot from six feet is than it is from 12. He's taking more shots from floater range than he has in any other year he's been with the Knicks. And those are good shots for him. Like, He's, he's shooting 50, 51% from floater range over the last two seasons. That's a good shot. Mm. He's got to gets, gets fouled on those shots because he's so good with that rip through. Yeah. He's able to catch guys, defenders. Like it's got a high foul rate points per possession on that shot out of a half court offense possession. Really good. Really good. That's really good offense. Now you add in the fact that he's creating open standstill threes from that position. Now you're like, the dude's been playing like a like a legitimate offensive hub, you know, for yeah. for a little bit now. He's playing great basketball and and they they need it right now because they're going to have to score a lot of points, I think. Absolutely. They're playing outstanding basketball. I mean, you know, the the night I see him take it right to Giannis, man, I said this this is the guy this team needs on a nightly basis. Can't solve the Drew Holiday puzzle, and, and that I think that should be a credit to Drew Holiday and, and his defensive brilliance. But you know, seeing him take on Giannis and run through OG Ananobi, man, Julius has been playing ferocious basketball, man. It's good to see.
You know what was funny about seeing him take on Giannis? When they played in Milwaukee in the beginning of November, he had a couple of plays where he isoed on Giannis late in the game. And I asked him about it after the game, and it was just us, like no cameras, chatting at the locker. But it was an interview. Mm. And and I had asked him about it. And I asked him if he thought it was good offense. And he basically was like, yeah, I like I like that process. I like mm. those shots. And he knew that my implication was I didn't think it was good offense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we had this very, very cordial disagreement, which ended in him saying that something happened on the court. Me not quite being able to remember the play enough to refute it, even though I thought he was wrong. Me asking him what he hypothetically considers to be catching the ball on the move Mm -hmm. and him tapping me on the back of the knee and saying, uh, now Fred, you're just making some stuff up. (laughs) So, so he, we've had a little bit of an inside joke about that moment Mm. for the last, for the last month, because I think somebody did call him out on going at Giannis. Mm. And then to see him go back there, and play in the in-season tournament. The quarterfinal, yeah. And go right at Giannis and me to be like, I guess it is good offense. I guess I guess I got to eat crow. Yeah. <laughs> got to eat yeah. crow on this one. Because, <laughs> man, he, he's he been doing this against, like, these are, these are the best defenders in the world. Yeah, yeah. These are not good defenders. Giannis is a defensive player of the year. OG Ananobi is a constant he, he well he's not yet a constant on all defense by the time he's done playing he will be a constant on all defense he will be a yeah, many yeah. times all defensive member uh these are scotty barnes is right. a really good defender like these are awesome defensive players and he is operating just wonderfully absolutely steamrolling these guys and it's been a, a sight to see 